Hi, it's uh, Sharon here, and I'm going to assemble um, another mask today. Um, I have a customer who is um, pretty petite. She already ordered a mask. She said it was really comfortable. I'm just going to show you a picture of it because you can see it's pretty big on her tiny little face. So I'm going to show you how I can make it a little bit smaller to fit her a little better. And uh, so here we go. Um, so I make a lot of linings ahead of time. So it has the pocket. They're already made. Here's the selection of fabric that she's going to choose. Um, I hope I got that centered right. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to do, though, is I am going to take off an inch and a half off of the end because she and I are both pretty tiny and we don't need that much um, of, a, of a cheek or a tail to um, to cover the face so I just took this part off now I still have my pocket and I have my face, my feature fabric. This is gonna whip up pretty fast. I've got black thread already. What I haven't done yet is snip. I've gotta snip these early. This helps keep the curve smooth. Oh, she also wants to have a wire. So I might as well add the wire in the demonstration. I'm noticing that my stitches didn't go all the way to the end uh, at the very beginning over by the nose part on this particular piece. And I like to make sure they nest together properly. So I'm going to go back and I'm just going to set this down to one and give it a little bit of security in the very beginning so that when I open it, yeah, that's all I need, just a little tiny bit. With my little extra piece, I might as well have a little thread saver. I like to do this once in a while because I really don't think it's as pretty when my threads look eaten up inside the um, inside the product okay so I'm going to open the lining first upside down that's the reason why I couldn't turn it off okay good okay so here's my liner make sure the nose is on the top and I put it together like this now I'm gonna nest these two pieces together in quilting you want to have the top piece feeding into the feed dog so that it nests together perfectly. So if I went to the right on the one side, I want to go to the right on the other so that if I press the seams, I'll all press it the right way, the same way. Hope that, I'm, that you understand what I'm saying. Okay, so I've got the two ends together. This is coming together really nicely. You can see how the pieces all line up beautifully. And <clears throat> I like to start sewing where the uh, two pockets join together. And I will overlap that a little bit. And I can open up that to about two and a half. Uh, I said that I would um, actually make it a little bit smaller for her. So I'm going to go back. And rather than 
trim everything off. I'm going to actually be a little bit more generous in the in the um, um, seam. So I'm going to go to I think I'll I'll go to that line. It gives me a little bit more. And I'll probably fit her much better if I give her a little bit of space on her face. You can feel the, the two sections nest together really nicely. And even though we have to make a lot of masks, I really believe in enjoying my work, so I don't really want to rush to the point of crazed abandon. following this line. And I drop my needle to that seam and then I'll turn it so that I can make sure everything is lining up correctly. I really like making the mask with a pocket. There's a little work in putting the pocket together, but what I like about it is it's easier to turn inside out. Okay. Now before I uh, turn it inside out, actually I'm not going to turn it inside out until after I put the wire on there, but the other also thing that I want to do is I want to snip my seams so that the curve opens up nicely. This is a nice three-eighths of an inch. That was the nose part, and here's the chin part. I can't wait for her to try it and tell me how it is. If you're making your own, you can customize it, but when I'm selling them, I have to make sure that it's a little bit versatile so that it can fit a few different faces. Now, so this is almost straight, so I don't really need to snip into those. I'll give this one a snip because I have some so many threads on it. It'll give it a little bit give. Okay, so we're going to put the wire on now. The thing that you want to remember is you always want to put your wire on the feature fabric side because the reason why you do that is because it adds a little bit of padding to the wire when you when you wear it so this is about three and three eighths of an inch and i had a heck of a time trying to remember how to measure that out so what i did was i removed the tape and underneath it is the adhesive. And when you do that, you can save it. 
and I've, I've saved one from before and maybe you can guess what I'm going to do. I'm going to fold it in half. So this makes half of the size and I'm going to lay that right where the thread is, which is the center of the mask. So that's where I'm going to put my wire. There's a little curve so the adhesive is actually inside the curve. Let me put it on again just so that you can see. It's almost where that cut is right here. Well, that's where I'm going to put it and I'm going to kind of like lay it really close to the thread. Now I know you can't see this. I'll try to put some extra light on it so maybe that will help I can barely see it myself so I'll try to bring it up and see if you can see where that lines up so I have this concept memorized so I don't forget which is which and then there's like hmm, two layers of fabric so that when and the third one, which is where the lining is, so that when the wearer puts it on, there's going to be a little bit of um, padding. And I saved these little folded pieces so that it makes it easy for me to figure out what the center is. Okay, now I put the wire on there. One of the things I forgot to do, though, I like to trim my corners. And this is how I do it. Actually, I save these scissors for those little nipping projects because they're really, really sharp and I want to save them for that. So I just use a different pair of scissors just to cut the corners, protect my really, really coveted scissors, the ones that I think really are super sharp. Being a hair cutter, I'm, uh, I guess I'm super partial to sharp scissors. I don't like cutting with dull knives or dull scissors. Very annoying. And this is a little bit mm, thick, so I'm going to trim some of it off. Not really super necessary, but since I've done one, I might as well do the other. When I'm alone, I usually like to listen to music, but I've gotten kicked off or I've had my music muted because I'm not paying for the music. Okay, so here's the other thing that I like to do when I'm turning it inside out. I put my thumbs in there and when I turn it, those points kind of just pop by themselves, see? And then the next piece is to turn the other part of it. So sometimes it helps if I curve it a little bit to try to pull the the um, the piece with the wire through as I'm turning it inside out because I want to be a little bit careful I don't want to pull the um, the wire off its track off that seam there we go and I have from a long time ago, a stick that has a rounded tip. You see this? It came with a, a, a set of, of tubes and things that you can turn inside out. But you can use a chopstick, just don't put a real pointy chopstick in there. All right, so I've kind of pushed that through. All right. These are going to get turned in anyway, and my wire feels like it's still in place. I can feel that it's still in place. That looks really good. I think she's going to be, I hope she's going to be really happy with this. And there's plenty of room here for her tiny little face. All right. Now. I wish that I had other 
masks to do because it would take I could take advantage of it take advantage of I have to change my foot my presser foot to a zipper foot because I want my stitching to kind of hug where the aluminum is in case when it gets washed I don't know if it's going to unglue itself because I just don't know it too soon for me to know but I can feel I can feel where the end of the aluminum is I don't want my sewing machine to um, I don't want to break my needle and there's just a little bit of space between the pocket I'm just gonna do that so that I have an idea where to go all right I'm going to sew it down. I'm going to sew a couple of stitches on the side. Okay, I'm going to turn it. And I know you might think I'm a nut, but I have all these gadgets, and each gadget works something to me. And I, the reason why I'm using this gadget is because it's pointy and I can hold on to the fabric because I don't want it to gather or pucker when I'm sewing it. I'm going to take my time. I want those stitches to go smooth. No reason to rush. Now there's a seam and I want to make sure that seam sews down nicely. bit of gathering. I'm sure you're not gonna, nobody's gonna see it, but I want to make sure that it doesn't get worse. And the end is right here, so I, that's my end point. Maybe this little green dot will give me an idea when I'm getting to that. I just went a little bit beyond. And there you have it. Now I'm going to trim off the threads. Well, you can see it on this side. haven't put the ties on. So this is three quarters of an inch of leggings from a plus size of leggings and this is really generous. I don't need this much. I need eight inches and look at how nice it stretches. So I'm going to trim off eight inches. Looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them in half and I'm still going to trim off 8 inches but I am going to trim off this flared area so it looks cleaner. And here we go. I don't need, it's a pretty skinny tie. And so I don't have to thread it through afterwards. I put the tie in there first. And I'll take advantage of my zipper foot and let that back a little bit. There we go. Let's 
one under the other. 